you're here this morning, we are talking about the excuses, walking with Moses in the book of Exodus. For those who did not, well, did everybody receive the little sheet in your um, bulletin, that's why I never eat? Did y'all get that? Well, for those who are listening by the, the DVD and by the website, uh, they don't know about it, so I'm going to share it right now before we begin tonight. I'm doing a topical message tonight, and uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. That's why I never eat, title of the article. Everybody has an excuse for not attending worship services. If we take those excuses and apply them to something else we do or don't do, they might look like this list. I don't eat anymore because I was forced to eat as a child. People who eat all the time are hypocrites. They aren't really hungry. There's so many different kinds of food, so I can't decide what to eat. I used to eat, but I got bored. None of my friends would eat with me. I only eat on special occasions like Christmas and Easter. I'll start eating when I get older. I'm too busy working. I don't really have the time. I don't believe that eating does any good. It's just a crutch. Restaurants and grocery stores are the only ones after my money. Laughable, isn't it? Regular attendance for worship to God is vital for a healthy soul, Hebrews 10 and 25. Our relationship with God is far more important than regular balanced meals. Without spiritual food, we will die, 1 Peter 2, 2. It said you're invited to come and worship with us at the Church of Christ. That means the Christians here. In fact, we'll save you a seat. So I thought that was a pretty good dog. Uh, Pretty good little article as we looked at Moses today. As the Lord leads, those who will stay with us over the next months, we'll try to work in some of Exodus and Brother Moses. But tonight I want to do a topical message called a real checkup. A real checkup. And we will read according to the places we come to as I call them out. On June the 8th, 1992, I was at the hospital, in the old hospital at Bristol. Not there for myself, but for my wife and the new baby to be born. A little Holland came that night, or I mean that day. We were there in the night, or early morning hours. And uh, said, it's a beautiful, beautiful child. So... 22 years have passed, and one girl's expecting, our oldest child's expecting a little baby, and very soon now, in August here, and so we're, we're getting all cranked up now, and uh, Holly has finished college, and so times are moving, aren't they? But I thought about the body, the physical body, a human body. You know the Bible talks about it. Uh, David in Psalm 139 shared some beautiful things as God's Spirit led him. He said, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 and 14. Now, I think we ought to eat correctly best we can, proper foods. I think you ought to get a good exercise. If you can't exercise, there are those who can't. I think sometimes you can read books on health and see the best doctors that you can find and get the best physical condition that you can work at. But you know this old body is going down. It will go down. But I do like to have checkups every now and then. Probably should get more than should. Have you had a real checkup lately? 
Well, what about your spiritual checkup? What about the care for the total person? Are you more than a physical person? Yes. You know, the Bible tells us in, in Genesis 1 something special about your body. Hear these words. Genesis 1, 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. In Genesis 2, 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Now, God made us in His image. He gave us a mind to think, a heart to reason. He gave us a spirit, this breathe into our nostrils, the breath of life. His Holy Spirit is a spiritual breath that we would be His highest and special creation. We might know Him and love Him, walk with Him, Trust Him. So we are a total person. Physical and spiritual. Now let's have a real checkup tonight. First of all, look at your eyes for a moment. How many believe that your eyes are a precious gift in your body? Do you believe that? Those here tonight who have problems seeing or have great troubles with your eyes, I'm very sorry, uh, I've just had little things happen to my eyes, and it's, it's just a terrible picture out there. Uh, today they have great surgeries, uh, laser surgeries, uh, all kinds of amazing accomplishments for the special eye that God gave us. But I want to look further for a moment. Matt, you might like to bring up here for the folks, 2 Corinthians, those who are turning in your Bible, that's great too. Hear, hear this about eyes. It's not looking with physical eyes either. Brother Paul, in dealing with the Corinthians, is talking some about death and being troubled and persecuted and giving his life for the sake of the gospel. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. For which cause we faint not, but though this outward man, this physical body, outward man perish, yet the inward man, the spiritual, is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look, there's that spiritual sight. Look, not in the things which are seen, but in the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. How are you seeing? We face sufferings and sicknesses and pain. But the Paul is saying our ultimate hope, the highest hope of our faith in the Lord Jesus. We're looking for things that are eternal in heaven. Where's your eyes looking tonight? Just here on earth? There's more. There is life after death. If you know that Jesus died and rose again and lives forever, you believe that? He's changed your life? Transformed you? Saved you? Brought you to a born again place in your life? To a new person? Because of Jesus Christ? He has a place prepared for you. He's preparing it, John 14 and 1. Are your eyes on the Word of God? Open my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law, Psalm 119 and 18. Eyes about the church. You know, the Lord Jesus talked in Revelation 3 to the church at Laodicea. If you ever read that, he talks about Laodicea was a place where they had a special eye salve. Uh, it was like a medicine 
And apparently they um, made it and produced it and sold it or whatever. But that eye salve, Jesus is saying you need more than physical eye salve. You need to come to me, Jesus is saying. Get medicine that will heal your spiritual eyes. And that church was really in shambles as such. They were lukewarm. And Jesus was getting ready to spew them out of his mouth. Get our eyes on Jesus tonight. Have you had your checkup lately? Hebrews 12 and 2, looking into Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So where are your eyes looking tonight? You better get them checked up. Get a real checkup. Secondly, we need a real checkup on our diet. Now, food can help you or it can hurt you. Now, there are cravers and there are starvers. There are dieters and there are gulpers. There are pickers and there are plungers. I don't know what I am. I, I was thinking about our diets, and I, I go back to the farm again. We spoke last week about pigs, hogs. And, um, and I always see this picture, pouring the feet, uh, hog feet in the trough, the old trough outside in the pasture. And about the time this come, sow is coming, this is a, those who don't know who a big sow is, it's a female hog, or like a mother pig or hog. And um, then there are some others there who come, maybe about the same size and all. And here she goes. And over here on this side, one about the same size, she comes, she said. I never always remember those pictures of eating, the pigs eating like that, you know. And different ones do the different things, you know. Some eat faster, some eat slower. I thought it's always an amazing thing about eating. But we need to eat proper spiritual food. What is your spiritual diet? Uh, the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 52, uh, 5 and 2, Why are you spending money on that which is not bread? Laboring for that which is not satisfied. Listen and eat what's good. Well, the Israelites were down in Babylon. You know, the background, the history there. They were filling themselves up with the physical things of Babylon, a pagan society. They had a bad diet of spiritual food. We call it full of religion, full of gods and goddesses. They were coming up dry. Isaiah said, you're eating that which is not real. It's going to destroy you. I want us to look tonight at John 6 for a moment about some real bread. John chapter 6. Matt, you got that brought up for us there. Jesus is dealing with the Pharisees and the, the people. And look at verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. But my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is He which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Well, they said to Him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am. Remember this morning about the great I am? I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that thirst. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. I want to eat the good bread, don't you? It's called everlasting bread. I want to take him as my very own. I want the bread that gives eternal life, that satisfies the spiritual hunger. I need a right relationship to God, don't you? You want that relationship to grow properly and well. So you have to feed it. You've got to feed it the right things. It's called a daily walk with the Lord. You can't just go out and get any kind of bread in this world. It's bread from heaven. Then we need some uh, diet of 
Good water. How many like good water? Don't you like good water? Chris helped me tonight. He brought up something on the internet access. Why do you think your body is made up of water? How much? A little baby, 75 to 78 percent water. Now as you get adults, it drops in 57 to 60 percent. Chris and I are trying to figure out if men or women had the most percentage of water. And what made a difference about that, I don't know. Anyway, we need good water, don't we? To live physically. But what about spiritually? Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, if you knew the gift of God, that He can give you the living water then you won't perish. You won't die separated from me. You'll live forever. you have eternal life. Jesus is the gift of God. Well, how's your diet tonight? You better have a checkup. You don't need to leave without checking on your diet. Thirdly, when have you checked your ears lately? Now, I'll tell you one thing. These special phones today, iPhones, cell phones, all these kinds of phones, they are smarter than I am. And I would say they're smarter than you are. Now, let me tell you what happened. It's a Monday or Tuesday. I picked up this phone. I said, I need to call Judy's secretary. Tell her something early there. It says in my ear, this phone call will not go through. I said, let me see this. It's still ringing. It's still ringing. It says Skyline right there. And it's still ringing. There's only one number back here. And it's still ringing. It said, this number will not go through. You have not paid your bill. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you. It told you flat out. It will tell you everything about your life. Amen. I took the, let me tell you something else about, about hearing things. You know, I, I, I was, I wanted to tell her, I said, you, you don't know who I am because it's not even in my name. And, uh, but no, this is not a real person, friends. This is a message. You can talk back all you want to. They're not going to hear it. And they don't care about it. Anyway, it, it's just an amazing thing, isn't it? Hearing aids. Now, some of you have the hearing aids. Thank God for them. It helps us. can hear better. Um, in the book of Proverbs, think about spiritual hearing. All through the Proverbs you hear, My son, hear the instruction of the Father. Proverbs 2, 2, Incline thine ear, your ear to wisdom. Chapter 4 and 1, Hear ye children the instruction of a father. Chapter 5, 1, Bow down thine ear to my understanding. Chapter 8, Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. 13, 1, Wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. How are you hearing? Spiritual. Now you got Jeremiah there, chapter 5. Oh, the great prophet Jeremiah. What a great man. He has some things to say. Jeremiah 5, 21 and following. People just weren't hearing. Hear now this, O oh foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it? 
And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? But this people have a revolting and a rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. Neither say there in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, and give it rain, both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things. Your sins have withholden good things from you. Hear. How are we hearing? Have you checked them on your hearing? Jeremiah said, people, they're not hearing the word. Jesus talked about it. He who has ears to hear, let him hear all through the gospel. You know what gets me? If you come up to me tomorrow and you say, Hey, Don, how you doing? I said, I'm sick. And you would say, Well, bless God, you're doing well today. Have a great day. What kind of hearing is that? I just said I was sick. And they think I said I'm well. Or I'm doing fine. Have you ever met people like that? It's called bypass hearing. They're going to say just what they want to say in just because of just practice, I guess. Habitual practice. You see what I'm saying? So you need to listen. Someone said they're sick, you say, gosh, I'm sorry, man. What about my way hearing? You just hear what you want to hear. Yes, somebody tomorrow said, do you hear what Pastor Page said in the message about Moses and excuses? No. We say, what were you doing? I was just paying attention to what I wanted to read. It's my way hearing. Well, I think Jesus likes follow-up hearing. So if you come to me, hear me, listen to me. Hear the word of God and obey it. Keep it. You take it in. It takes spiritual ears to hear the gospel or to hear the words of Jesus and tune in with Him and follow that, what you've heard. Number four tonight, when have you checked up on your walk or your feet? You know, some people have little feet and long feet. Wide feet, stocky feet, short feet. You know, to have feet and legs are a wonderful thing. Now, many of you know about the Wounded Warriors, don't you? Heard of the Wounded Warriors Project? And we see them sometimes on the commercials. They lost their legs, a bomb is going off, a mine or something like that. Blew one leg off. What a, what, a, what a tragic thing. Some people born had polio. Some of you here today probably had families. Did y'all have some families with polio maybe? Family way in the past before they had the vaccinations or vaccines. Our legs, our feet, are very important. How's our spiritual feet. How are we walking spiritually? In Romans chapter 15, I'm sorry, Romans 10. This is great. We call it, call it the missionary chapter, but it's more than that. But Romans 10 and 15, verse 15. How shall they preach except they be sinned? How is it, is it written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Beautiful are the feet that bring the good news. I said, we can be a missionary here. You don't have to go far places to be a missionary. Be a missionary at home, to work, schools, communities. But you carry beautiful feet. You know, a missionary talked about one of the... Um, Natives where he was helping in mission to work said he had beautiful feet because he brought the gospel. I thought, as you know, it's very scriptural, you know. 
In Romans chapter 8, Matt, you got that there for us, Romans 8. You know, there's, we're taking a journey tonight. Either we're going to walk by feet of freedom or we're going to walk by feet of slavery. It's called flesh or spirit. Sinful nature or the righteous nature. Listen to, uh, it's a great chapter. I just want to share a few verses here. Just thinking about walking. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk, walk. You're living, you're moving. Not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. See that? In Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We're not bound by the power of sin and death over us as we are in Christ and we walk with Christ through His Spirit. What a beautiful picture of the old man, the old nature uh, compared to the new nature. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, verse 3, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. How are you walking? If we're walking by the sinful nature, we are being condemned and judged guilty. But in Christ, He's taken us out through the death of the cross. Those who have repented, turned from their self and sin have believed, trusted in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, declared not guilty. Aren't you glad Jesus paid the ransom price, redemption price? He bought us out of the slavery block. We're set free. We're let go. We begin to walk as a child of God, not to be free as you please. Free in Christ. To walk the narrow way with Jesus. You're not controlled by the sin nature. By Satan. By the rule of death and law. We have a new power. The Spirit of God to do His will. You know when you begin to spiritually walk with the Lord, you have a desire for good fruit, don't you? Anybody ate good strawberries lately? Blueberries, all kinds of good fruits. Well, the Bible tells us in Galatians 5, I'm not going to turn there, but you ought to read that sometimes. It's a great chapter, Galatians 5. It talks about the, those who walk in to fulfill the flesh, lust of the flesh, they're going to bear bad fruit. Then walk by His Spirit, they bear good fruit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, Faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So we live each day controlled by His Spirit. Fifthly tonight, you need to check up on your heart. Now, well, that's an amazing pump in your body, you know. Physical pump. Called the heart. Pushes blood thousands of miles. And uh, they have all kinds of tests now that detect things about your heart, EKGs, and put wires on you. And uh, now they got things you can monitor and just look at your heart beating right there and stick it on you. So, wow, there's my heart. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? All kinds of tests. The spiritual heart. How's it pumping tonight? This place of the deepest desires. We call it the will of man. Is it led by the Spirit of God? Jeremiah 17, 9 and following says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
I, the Lord, search the heart. Well, you want somebody to do a test on you, he's doing a test on us. Heart of man, we're born with a sin nature. It's dark. We're in the process of rebelling. We're bent. We have missed the mark. We desire to turn from God. We're tempted to do wrong. See, we have sin in us. We don't have to go out and get it. It's in our nature. That's why God has to do something wonderful and new. Give us a new nature. A new heart, we call it. The greatest king of Israel, old Dave in Psalm 51, buddy, he needed a new heart, didn't he? Rebelled against God and sin. And all through Psalm 51, he cried out to God, Have mercy on me. Wash me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. Purge me with hyssop. It's a kind of a plant that gives a picture of a plant that can rub and cleanse things. And I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart. Verse 10. Clean heart, O God. How's your heart tonight? Have you humbled to God? Confessed your sin? Got up? Began to walk daily with the Lord? God gave us a wonderful plan, didn't He? He gave us His Son to take care of the broken, sinful heart. Sent Jesus to die on the cross, shed His blood. So the redness covers the blackness and turns it white. Now that's a, that's a real color change, isn't it? Cleansed heart. What a Savior. Read about that in John 3. Romans 3 in chapter 10. So you're going to get your heart checked? Not just the physical heart. I'm saying the spiritual heart. How many people really want to be sick tonight? Does really anybody want to be sick? No, you wouldn't want to do that. But you know many are sick tonight. Not physically. Some are physically hurt and with pains and so forth, but there's some spiritually sick. A lot spiritually sick. Well, preacher, I'm doing my best. I try hard to be right with God. I'm leading a decent life. I want to help others best I can. Well, that's commendable. I'm not saying anything wrong with that. But to get right with God, it's not going to make it. You can't do it alone. God's Holy Spirit has to do radical surgery on us. It's available. The cost's extremely high. It's expensive. But aren't you glad it's already paid for? Already paid. You've got to come to the great physician. You've got to come to the right doctor. His name is Dr. Jesus. He gave his life on the cross... He died so we could live. To make us a new person, make us a whole person, a complete person. He's waiting for you to come to Him, to live for Him. Let's bow in humble prayer. Thank you, Father, for this little checkup tonight. I, I would say every one of us needs to search our lives. Look at the physical picture.
then we need to move beyond it to the deeper spiritual aspect of life. God, I don't know about every person's heart here tonight. I wouldn't try to know about it. But you said you searched the heart. You know whether it's wicked, sinful, lost. You know whether it's saved, blessed, righteous. Would through your Holy Spirit you do a work in every life tonight and help them to see before you where they stand. If they're lost, they need to be saved and come to Christ. They need to be a part of the church family. You help them to come. If someone needs to pray, seek their own heart and get it right as a Christian. Let them do it tonight. Confess it. Make it right with you. But Lord, you do your will. We wait upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.